In this video, we're going to be sizing conductors for the primary side of a transformer. Now, in prior videos, we calculated the maximum overcurrent protective device, fuse or circuit breaker, to protect the transformer. That was done in Article 450. Now, all Article 450 cares about is transformers. So where do we go for conductors? Well, let's look in overcurrent protection. Article 240, specifically dot four, and that's about conductor protection. What it tells me is I've got to protect a conductor from overcurrents. But it tells me to go to Article 310 to find the conductor's ampacity ratings. So we go to Article 310. Now it tells me to go to Article 310.14 which then tells me to go to dot 15, which tells me to use any number of tables beyond that. And I settle on table 310.16. I settle there because that's for conductors in raceway and it has conductors with the type of insulations I'm looking for and a 75 degrees Celsius rating. Okay, that's what I'm looking for is the minimum size 75 degrees Celsius copper conductor. What can I get away with here? Well, since this breaker or fuse is going to be ahead of the transformer, protecting the transformer, I'm going to plug the wires into that and connect the transformer. So the wires obviously need to be protected by that same breaker. So if it's 35 amps, I need to get a conductor that's able to carry 35 amps. Okay, let's look at our table. And let's go to the copper side, which is the left half of the table. And then the 75 degree Celsius column is the middle column, 60, 75, 90 degrees. Pick the middle column and just go down until you find a wire that can handle at least 35, degree, uh, 35 amps. Okay, as you go down there, what do you get? A number 10 says it's 75 degrees, it can carry 35 amps. However, don't get too excited because I want you to move from the where it says 35 amps and move back to the number 10. What do we have? We've got an asterisk. Anytime you have something like that, you gotta see what it's about. Go down to the bottom of the page and see what the asterisk says. You know what it says? It says, go back to 240.4, specifically 240.4D. So I turn back there and it's about small conductors. If I read down, it tells me that a number 10 copper, the maximum size circuit breaker I can put on that is gonna be a 30 amp. You know what I could do? I could lower this to 30 amps and then the number 10 would be okay. Because remember, this is a maximum. Would a 30 amp still allow the full load to go through? Sure. And I could then put a number 10 wire. I just gotta make sure when I downsize the breaker that it isn't gonna be too small and cause the transformer to nuisance trip when I turn it on. But that's one way to get away with the number 10. But if you wanna stick with the maximum 35 amps, that's not gonna work because of the small conductor rule. So let's look back at the table. What's my next option? Below a number 10? The number eight is good to 50 amps. Now, if this wire can handle 50 amps, well, the breaker is only 35. So that'll surely protect this thing from any overloads, overcurrents of any type. So we could use a number eight and maintain the maximum size overcurrent protection device, if that's what we desire. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this off, put a different transformer up here, and we're gonna calculate it under, see a couple other quirks. What I've got here is I upsized it to a 75 kVA, made it a three phase transformer, and our full load amps came out to 90.3. And because I changed this to primary and secondary protection, there would be a breaker or fuse on this side of the transformer also, then this allowed me to do 250% back in article 450. 
So I, I get a huge breaker here, 225 amps. Remember my full load amps, my rated current is 90 amps. So if we want to keep the maximum, what size conductor would I need to use? We go back to our table here, go down that 75 degree column under copper, and what do we come up with? Well, I put uh, two sizes here. A four aught will definitely, it can handle 230 amps, it will definitely be protected by this breaker. Okay? But why did I put the three aught? Because I have a special rule that I can use on the primary of the transformer, I cannot use it on the secondary. There's another rule later that says I cannot use it on the secondary, but I can use it generally and on the primary of the transformer. So let me take a look at what that rule is. 240.4B, I call it the bump up rule. What it tells me is if I have a conductor whose ampacity does not match exactly a standard circuit breaker size, where do I get my standard sizes? 240.6A lists my standard sizes and the table with the same number. So I look there for the standard sizes because if the conductor doesn't meet the standard size, this rule allows me to protect it with the next higher size overcurrent protective device. So let's just double check a three on. But you know what, when I look here, sure enough, there's a 200 amp breaker. So the maximum size breaker I can use on a 3 aught would be a 200 amp. Since this is maximum, could I reduce this to 200 amps and then use a 3 aught? Sure, I could do that. Would 3 aught still carry the load? No problem. Now, one other little quirk about these transformers is this. Yeah, I've stressed that this is maximum and I don't need to go that big, I can go smaller. And especially when I'm going primary and secondary, this is quite large. If I use conductors like this, I'm probably spending a lot more money than I need to. Installing bigger conduit, pulling bigger wires, never mind the cost of the wire, it's gonna cost me more. So what's more common is to use a standard, uh, a lower size breaker. And we often go 125 and maybe size it up a little bit. So what's common here is doing this. What's common is to use a 125 amp circuit breaker on this size transformer. Now, I went ahead and looked at my ampacity table and I said a number two can carry 115 amps. I may not want to size the breaker that low, but I thought maybe that could work with this rule. And I put a number one because I know a number one can be protected by this breaker. But if I want to get the smallest conductor I can use with code rules, then let's check this out. Let's go to our standard sizes table for the overcurrent. And you know what I'm going to find? I'm going to find 110 amp and I'm going to find 125 amp. This does not match a standard size as recognized by the code. So what I'm allowed to do by my bump up rule is to protect this conductor with the next higher size breaker, which is a 125 amp breaker. So here's sizing conductors for the primary of a transformer and some of the quirks that go along with it.